Well, folks, welcome off yonder, Alaska, where I'm joined here with the legend, Mr. Forrest Wilder. Hello. And, uh, Forrest, tell us what we're doing today. Where are we going? Well, we're going up Powerline Pass. It's a well-traveled uh, piece of uh, land here up to the saddle. You can see snowed in. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go over the saddle there. We're, we're at about 2,000 feet right now. We're going to get up to about 3,300 or so. And uh, we're going to go over the saddle and come back down pretty, pretty steep, almost to the sea level. It's going to be about 13 miles one way. We've got a car parked on the other end. And uh, it should be a good day. Looks like a pretty, pretty clear sky. Uh, a little bit of snow. Um, that's going to be interesting. Um, but it should be good. Yeah, we, got, we woke up to uh, overcast clouds this morning and thought maybe we'd be in the gray all day. But it has lifted a little bit, so that's looking pretty good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to move on down the trail here, and we'll check in with you as we go. Well, we've got some moose across the way and a little bit, about, I'm counting six. Uh, four there, and then just over another two, although, you know, that could be that could be seven right there. Anyway, it's a nice little batch, and, uh, it's, you know, it is the season of rutting, and so they're all hanging out, and... They're pretty happy, happy moose. Having fun, exactly. And uh, we're getting closer to the white stuff here. As we move our way up the uh, the valley here, leaving Anchorage behind, just underneath that cloud layer there, actually. So Anchorage still thinks it's kind of a cloudy day. relatively fresh bear tracks. Uh, by the size of them, I would say it's grizzly. Um, but, you know, we're going to be able to follow them up here. They're up, going up the trail, and we're going to be able to follow them, see where they go. They look fairly fresh, as I say. The snow hasn't been here that long, although it could be a few days. Um, or it could be just right up, right up around the corner. How's it up there, Forrest? Not too bad. A little steep. But, uh, been taking this, following this guy's tracks step by step, and uh, serving up to be pretty good footing. We got some nice snow drifts over there, the lake, and then looking down the valley where we came from. As you can see, we've uh, we're losing our mountain peaks here. Got a little more fog rolling in, so we'll see what it looks like when we get to the other side of the pass here. See how much fog we got to deal with. Ah. Not a bad climb. Looking down below us, Guitar Lake. Probably not really called that, but uh, happily named by camera. That's what it looks like to me. Of course, I'm copying the name of the lake on the west side of Mount Whitney, which is also called Guitar Lake. It looks just like a guitar. You can call this one Guitar Lake. That's Alaska for guitar. Alright, so now, uh, We'll see what we have around the corner here. It's always nice to find a big fence in something or other. Part of the gas line. But, uh, yeah, we'll continue on down the trail here. There's the view. Yeah, we got a little ways to go still. Well, we thought for a little bit there we'd lost our bear tracks, but, uh, we've reacquired the trail. He's got a pretty good gait going now. He's got big, broad steps, and he's galloping down the hill in the snow. Just have to make sure uh, we approach each bend with caution. 
Although it looks like it's been here a day or so, so. And there's always the wayward snowball. Well, while Forrest found another rock he thinks he has to hit with a snowball, um, we had a pretty sweet little avalanche up there. I mean, it was it was minute. I won't I won't lie. It was very small, but it was pretty cool. Definitely heard it come rumbling down and took a quick glance, and there was snow piling down onto this cone here. Of course. Still going there. He's got the frequency thing going. But uh, look at this. It'd be really nice if that cloud would lift a little bit and we'd get a little better view of the mountains there. But it's, it's pretty sweet in this mystical sort of misty environment as well. How you doing there, Forrest? Oh, so close. So close. Um, I'm gonna head down. Um, I've got the keys, so I'll just leave the forest up here. That was really close. That was close. Keep working on it. Well, we're doing pretty well, Forrest. Come a little ways down the pass. The guidebook did say there was a steep part, and we were just starting to wonder where that was. And then we crested over here. Like, oh, that's probably it. But there's the uh, arm of the Cook Inlet. Mm -hmm. Turning an arm. Turning an arm of the Cook Inlet. Yep. And then the uh, Kenai Peninsula across the water there. Still plenty of clouds. Did I tell you how the turning an arm got its name? How did it do that? Well, Captain Cook, who is the discoverer, discoverer came up this way. Um, came in to Cook Inlet, named after him now. And they came into Turning an Arm, and the the tidal fluctuations in Turning an Arm are the second most drastic in the world. I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but the fluctuation between low and high tides are the second largest in the world. Some 20 feet or so. I don't know. And uh, anyway, so when the tide comes out, comes rushing out, it's really pretty strong, and so. He happened to come in with his his ship when the tide was coming out, and it kept pushing the boat back. And so in the captain's log, it says, we turn again, as they got pushed back multiple times. And so that's how it got its name. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. Turn again arm. So uh, go with the tide, or more commonly known as go with the flow. Wow, what a change some aspect and elevation makes. Here we are in the thick foliage, coming down the opposite side of the pass, clearing the snow. There above us are the traces of it. But uh, we'll pretty much descend all the way down to, uh, to sea level is all the way down there where we left the car and uh, the trees and the foliage will get thicker and thicker. We'll probably end up with a pretty good canopy over our heads here, not before too long. But uh, it's all downhill from here. Well folks, we made it. We are uh, nearly at the parking lot now where we left the car this morning. And uh, walking through the, uh, you know, what Forrest tells me turns out to be the northernmost boreal rainforest here, uh, just outside of uh, Anchorage, or technically we're still in the Anchorage city limits. Yeah. Largest uh, municipality in all of America, so I'm told. Ever. Ever. So there you go. Except for maybe Rome. But, uh, which is in Italy. Um, so, Forrest, uh, synopsis on the, the trail, what'd you think? I thought it was pretty good. It said uh, we'd done about 11 miles so far, it looks like. Um, and we're just pounding out the last bit here. Um, you know, it was, uh, we cheated a bit. We got a lot more downhill than we did uphill. So we didn't earn all of it, but, um, but it was good. We had a good uphill there at one point. 
and uh, hit the snow course, and I like that. And, um, you know, I didn't have to change out any layers. I, I was in the layers I'm in now uh, all the way through, which is... Little hat change, that's about it. Little hat change, and that's about it. Yeah. So that was nice. I changed a little bit more. Uh, highlight. Highlight, definitely the bear tracks. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Definitely the bear, bear tracks. Bear tracks, and uh, the ptarmigan was kind of cool for me to the see. The ptarmigan were nice. That was neat, a little wildlife there. So, yeah. um... Yeah, not the uh, not the most scenic trail. I mean, it, it wasn't the, bad. Though. The I mean, power lines got in the way. We're there, sure, but you know you can't really go wrong in the Chugach. Chugach is nice. Chugach is nice. So um, we recommend it. We'll uh, we'll go a thumbs up Two thumbs and up. Uh, see where we end up next time. Till then, take care. Ciao.